In the previous video, I had covered evaporation as the fourth section of sugarcane processing. In this section, clear juice is heated to raise bricks to sigistin. The product that comes from the last evaporator is referred to as syrup. This syrup is pumped to pan boiling section. In this video, I am going to cover pan boiling and centrifugation. Pan boiling aims at removing sugar crystals from syrup. Only sucrose can crystallize at supersaturation point of around 85 degrees bricks, leaving other components in the syrup which make molasses. A mixture of sugar crystals and molasses is referred to as masicute. Boiling of syrup and crystallization take place under a vacuum of around 600 mm mercury with a temperature of around 60 degrees Celsius. Syrup is boiled at low temperature to prevent caramelization. Basically, there, there are three types of pans, that's pan A, which prepare A masicute, pan B, which prepare B masicute, and pan C, which prepare C masicute. Operation of these pans can be batch or continuous. Let's cover the parts of the pan and then have the saucer. The saucer feed and discharge the material from the pan. Number two, calantia. It has stainless tubes where feeding and heating of materials occur. Number three, you have vapor body. This is where boiling of materials occur. Then you have condenser. The function of the condenser is to create vacuum. Next, we have the vent. The vent removes gases like ammonia from the pan. Remember, ammonia can prevent efficient, bo efficient boiling of the materials. Next, we have view glasses. The, the boiling of material in the pan is observed through view glasses. The next part is the scale. The scale shows the level of material fed in the pan in the form of hectoliters. This enables the operator to, to determine the quantity of a of masicule that has been dropped to the crystallizer. The next part is body wash. The function of body wash is to increase pressure in the in the pan. The next is dome. The dome holds vacuum. It has cover which prevents sucking of material to condenser by the vacuum. Next we have feed valves. They feed required materials to main feed valve. Below is the procedure followed to start a pan. Number one, all the feed valves are closed because vacuum can suck and required material. Number two, body wash is open to increase pressure in the pan. Number three, discharge valve is open to remove all the foreign materials in the pan, then closed. Number four, the condenser is open to raise the vacuum in the pan. Number five, steam or vapor is open to heat the tubes of the calantria. Finally, main feed valve is open. Then the feed valves of the required materials are open to feed the material to the pan. Pan flow can have more than three pan S depending on crushing capacity of the factory. Operators mostly decide to prepare a greening which has the required quantity of sugar crystals, then divide this greening to three pans. This greening is used to make masicute A. Syrup and melt is fed to the pan while boiling up to 160 hectoliters level. This level is just for the calantria tubes. Melt is the remelted sugar. Sometimes Produced sugar can be of poor quality. It is remitted back to, to liquid, then pumped to pan boiling section to raise the purity of syrup. The material is concentrated to metastable zone of supersaturation. After concentration, predetermined quantity of B magma is then introduced to the concentrated material. Big magma has tiny sugar crystals which act as nuclei that initiate and accelerate crystallization process. Material in the pan is bricks to make crystals strong and mature. The next step is hardening whereby water is added to the material in the pan to achieve the required quality and quantity of grains. It dissolves weak grains and makes remaining strong crystals rough. Rough crystals absorb sucrose from syrup efficiently. After hardening, the mixture is mixed again to remove excess water. Then, one liter of viscosity reducer is added to the material as viscous material reduces heat exchange in the pan. 
Syrup is, is fed again to the pan while boiling up to around 500 hectoliters. Crystals absorb sucrose from syrup, hence enlargement in size. Once the crystals of egg graining attain the required size, it is divided equally to three pans. Graining has more crystals. These crystals have to be grown to desired table sugar crystal size. Graining in the pan has to be at 160 hectoliters level. Syrup and melt is fed to the pan while boiling to around 450 hectoliters. Added syrup and melt replace the evaporating moisture and provide the growing crystals with sucrose. When the required crystal size is attained, a massacute is bricked to around 91 to 93 degrees bricks, then drop to crystallizing. The bricks, crystal size and growth should be constantly monitored during boiling on the glass slide or microscope to avoid overbricksing or underbricksing. Overbricksing lead to formation of false grain and blockage of farms, while underbricksing lead to dissolving of crystals, hence reduce the quantity of crystals in the pan. Efficient boiling is achieved by controlling the flow rates of syrup and steam in the filling steps throughout the process to keep the supersaturation index within the metastable zone limit. Crystals of massacre should have uniform size for easier centrifugal separation. Small crystals fill the gaps between larger crystals, resulting in a layer of crystals in the centrifugal screen which does not purge easily. They may also pass through screen, leading to lower molasses exhaustion. When the massacute is ready for discharge, the following procedure is followed. Number one, the condenser water is closed to stop creation of vacuum. Number two, vacuum breaker is open to reduce vacuum in the pan, hence it's easy to discharge the material. Number three, the discharge valve is open to discharge the material. Finally, steam is open to wash the pan and remove all the materials. Massacute is dropped to crystallizer to cool to 45 degrees Celsius. It is slowly stirred while it cools in order to reduce the solubility of the crystals. A massacute does not stay long in the crystallizer because its purity is high, hence the longer it stays, the more false grains form which combine together or combine with other original crystals to form conglomerates. Massacute from crystallizer is dropped to centrifuge. Centrifuge use centrifugal force to separate sugar crystals from molasses based on the differences in their densities. Molasses is less dense than sugar crystals, hence is pushed away from the spinning point to the walls of the centrifuge due to greater centrifugal force on it, and passes through the screen and collected in the molasses tank, while sugar crystals remain at the center and dropped on hopper. At the centrifugal point, we have batch and continuous centrifuge. Batch centrifuge is used to to, to separate A massacute while continuous centrifuges is used to separate B and C massacute. Batch centrifuge used to separate sugar crystals in massacute A from molasses revolves at a speed of around 1200 revolution per minute. Massacute A from crystallizer is discharged to pug mill. After plowing, plug, pug mill gate automatically open allowing the massacute to enter the centrifuge through chute. Massacute is filled in the centrifuge for 4 seconds then pack may automatically close. Chute is washed with hot water. Let's cover the stages of batch centrifugal cycle. The first stage is charging. The speed here is 10 revolution per minute. Hot water is sprayed to massacute to reheat it to 53 degrees Celsius to reduce viscosity for better centrifugal performance. At this stage, a heavy molasses is removed. The second stage is acceleration. Speed increases slowly from 10 revolution per minute to 1200 revolution per minute. Hot water is sprayed to crystals to remove the layer of molasses. Steam is sprayed to, to, is sprayed to crystals to dry them. The third stage is spinning. Speed here is 1200 revolution per minute and a light molasses is produced. It refers to, to as a light because it has more water as compared to a heavy molasses. It's retarding. Speed decreases slowly from 1200 revolution per minute to 10 revolution per minute. Steam is sprayed to sugar crystals again for final drying. The remaining elite molasses is removed. The final stage is plowing. 
speed at this stage is 10 revolution per minute the plow open to discharge sugar to hopper sugar dropped on hopper has moisture content of around 2 percent and temperature of around 75 degrees celsius it's therefore dried by hot air to reduce moisture to below 0.5 percent and then cooled by cold air sugar air is the only one that is packaged and taken to the market air heavy and air light molasses is pumped to the dilution tank water and viscosity reducer is added to this molasses to dissolve any crystals present and reduce the viscosity respectively a molasses still has high purity is therefore pumped to pan b to make b secure for further sucrose exhaustion so in the next video i'll cover preparation of b secure and c secure finally i have a small assignment for you number one it's about the zones of saturation kindly do the research on this number two research on types of graining i highly welcome my new members if you have not yet subscribed i kindly request you to subscribe to my channel so that we can continue with this food science journey together thank you very much see you in the next video